Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, I want to show you guys my entire vacuum line setup in my Turbocharged Z36. I got a handy board here just for you guys. Stick around. So one of the common questions that I get about my turbocharged E36 is how did I route all my vacuum lines to my blow-off valve, wastegate, how did I do my crankcase exhaust vents? I'm about to explain all that to you guys in this short video, or fairly short I hope. So in order to explain how all of my vacuum and boost lines are routed, I chose to do it in two ways, uh, depending on the way you guys like to learn. Uh, one way is of course I wrote it all on a highlighted board, and in second, I will actually be explaining uh, physically where in the motor all these vacuum lines are. I hope that this video will help inspire future Turbo E36 builds and help current ones because I know that at this point in my build it was the hardest point wrapping my head around where all these lines went um, but hopefully after this video you guys will get a better understanding of that. So if you want to understand a vacuum line setup in a turbocharged car in general or specifically in this E36 you really have to understand the stock setup, which is my first point right here. You want to be able to do all the maintenance and understand all the components that work within your system, which include the mass sensor, the auto control valve sensors, brake booster lines, all the little emissions and all the little sensors that go around the motor. Some of those have vacuum lines. So there are many resources you could utilize in order to figure out where these are. You can pull up diagrams on websites like realoem.com. Uh, I've used that website so many times in order to pull up schematic diagrams and it actually shows where parts are placed and it shows entire diagrams of exploded views of part systems like intakes, engines, drive lines, transmissions, everything like that. Um, utilize the internet to your advantage in order to look for those diagrams so you can really understand how the air flows around the motor. The next step is find out which components require only vacuum pressure. So a lot of components in modern cars have check valves, so it will only pull vacuum in one direction, but if it was pressurized in the other, it will block it from being uh, damaged from the air pressure. My next point is be aware and learn about any emission sensors or pressure sensors in your car. These sensors would communicate with your ECU in order to understand and interpret the airflow that's going into the motor, and it might adjust fuel tables accordingly. If you just leave that unplugged or vented to atmosphere, it might throw off the ECU and run the car too rich or too lean. Find out whether or not some of these sensors can be vented to atmosphere or not. If so, you can just leave them be and leave them plugged in or leave them hanging somewhere. So if an emission sensor uh, cannot be deleted or vented to atmosphere, you're going to have to find out a way in order to either tune it out, uh, cut some lines, or even put a resistor in there to fool the ECU in thinking that it's reading correct airflow or reading correct air pressure or whatnot, anything like that. So the next thing you guys gotta understand is also the vacuum sources in a naturally aspirated car versus a forced induction car. So this is oversimplified, but basically in a naturally aspirated vehicle, the main point of intake vacuum pressure is from the actual intake system itself. So in the initial downstroke of the piston, uh, air is pulled in through the intake valves. That in turn creates a vacuum pressure. So if you have a full motor running at full tick, you'll notice that it's consistently in vacuum pressure. So E36s typically have about 14 psi of vacuum pressure. Anything lower than that, you have a vacuum leak somewhere. Um, but to change things up in force induction cars, uh, force induction vacuum sources have the same exact thing, except what's different is the fact that when you go idle, full throttle, or part throttle. So when you press the gas on a turbocharged vehicle, um, it will spool the turbo and pressurize the entire intake system. Basically, that means that the entire motor is partially in vacuum only at idle. So if it's part throttle or full throttle, chances are the entire intake system is under boost pressure. This might not be correct for modern day vehicles, there might be other pressure regulation systems that I don't account for, but this is the thought process that I went through in my head in order to start uh, piecing together a new vacuum line setup that is customized for my turbo setup. So going off of what I just said about force induction systems versus NA motors, um, these are the components that do not source only vacuum pressure, meaning that they either have a check valve or you can boost these components. So the fuel pressure regulator, the brake booster, the auto control valve, and your MAF setup can be hooked up just like they are in a stock setup. So under boost, these four things will not be affected by them. So the components that absolutely cannot be handle boost, but please, please, please do not boost your valve cover CCV system. And what I mean is this little guy right there. So this little guy is the crankcase vent for the entire valve cover. 
you do not want to boost that because you'll run into oil leaks and possibly have running issues on the motor. So I wanted to show you guys a schematic diagram of my entire setup before I actually showed you guys the setup in person. Um, basically you have the turbo right there and it will spool normally and then you can see that there's a boost tap coming from it and basically that is going to be hooked up to a manual boost controller. I didn't label that there. And then that goes to a wastegate. So then moving on from air going into the intercooler, air coming from the intercooler uh, goes through a tube that holds my blow off valve. A blow off valve is used to release excess pressure from the turbo. Um, that is why I chose to splice it in line with the original stock positioning of the intake manifold connection to the brake booster because when it's on boost it will help keep it shut and then when you go off the throttle it will be in vacuum so that it will help pull open the blow off valve to release that excess pressure. So then from that tube it goes through the MAF normally and then right here it will split between the throttle body and the idle control valve. So air from the MAF goes to the throttle body and then to the idle control valve. Now when the throttle body is closed, air is regulated through this idle control valve. And then so what I did was I utilized the extra nipple that's on the stock fitting of the idle control valve and then used that with a silicone line and hooked it up to a boost gauge inside my car. So the fuel pressure regulator has its own internal check valve, so you can really just leave that alone. But if you choose to uh, utilize a new pressure regulator, uh, this line of course can still be utilized, or you could tap it from the manifold with a brass fitting. So one of the biggest questions I get is the crankcase vent options from the valve cover itself. Now stock, this would be hooked up somewhere into the intake plumbing so that it pulls a vacuum from this crankcase and pulls out the excess oil vapors that pressurize as the motor's running normally. Um, so you got a couple options that you can do in order to relocate this vacuum source. So I came up with a list of a couple alternative vacuum sources you could use in order to vent this. Um, so the first one would be vent to atmosphere, possible but it's not good for a daily driver because the stock system and the stock ECU uh, will quantify this as a vacuum leak potentially if you just choose a vent to atmosphere. So another option is to use the turbo intake with a catch can. Um, I think it has insufficient vacuum because basically you'd be putting a filter in front of the intake side of the turbo and depending on how fast it spools and how much it spools, you might not get enough vacuum pressure from this location itself because it is pulling a high volume of air through a fairly large opening. So the third option you can do, which I chose to do, is an exhaust crankcase vent system. Um, typically, Moroso sells the best kit in my opinion. Um, I have something similar to it, but I'll explain how it works in a little bit. The last option requires a vacuum pump, but that's really uncommon unless you're using it for racing applications. Basically what that is is an external pump that you mount in the car and it requires electrical power and basically it will uh, vacuum pressure this entire crankcase. And it's shown to actually have improved horsepower and then gain a substantial amount of torque from a motor. So to conceptually explain my uh, crankcase vent system, I basically have the crankcase vent area hooked up to a Moroso Venturi tube or something similar to that. Basically the way the tube works is that it's welded in a position inside the downpipe in such a way that as exhaust gases flows over it, it creates vacuum pressure and pulls a vacuum through that tube. And then basically it combines all the oil vapors into the typical exhaust flow. Now bear in mind, you're going to have to do this either with no cats or after your catalytic converter because you don't want these oil vapors to contaminate the internals of the catalytic converter. So the Moroso kit, which is the best kit on the market in my opinion, uses a tube that has a little slit and so you'd weld it into this orientation itself such that when the exhaust gases flow, they flow through a little inlet on the side and then it will curve downward violently and as you increase the RPMs in the car, more exhaust gases will flow and the higher vacuum pressure that you'll achieve as the power band increases. Now, the second diagram below is the one that I, is the tubing position that I use in my car. It has a similar effect but it didn't have that little slit on the side. So I played around with a couple different orientations of this specific tube itself with the uh, air compressor. In this orientation, because it creates an obstruction of the flow and wants to compensate for it, uh, as exhaust gases flow in this orientation, it will actually pull, uh, pull crankcase fumes this way. So now that I tried explaining my entire vacuum line and boost line setup conceptually, I'm going to actually show you guys how it's applied on my car directly. So I guess to start out showing you guys in person how this vacuum system works, uh, the first thing I got here is this is the brake booster. Um, this originally, 
So originally the brake booster will have an actual line that goes from the manifold to an actual nipple right there. And then basically I just took a T-fitting and I took a silicone hose line and drew it all the way to my blow-off valve. When you hook this vacuum source to a blow-off valve, you want it on the actual port that will allow for boost pressure to push a spring downwards and then pull it back up when the car is in vacuum off throttle. So that will help regulate and control when the air pressure is released from the turbocharger itself. So this red boost line right here goes to a little nipple on the side of what I call a turkey neck fitting. And this turkey neck fitting basically hooks up to this now silicone tubing that goes to the auto control valve, which is down there. And the further see, you can see that the line from there simply goes back here and is routed through the firewall and into the cabin of my car to the boost gauge. Um, so you can't really see around this throttle body, but the throttle body had a couple vacuum ports on the side that went to different things like either involved in emission systems or the actual charcoal canister, which I have just vented to atmosphere down there. Um, I think there was only one port on the side that I really just capped off. So supplying the air to the actual idle control valve, I just have this silicone boot and it has a single flange on the bottom that connects to the ICV stock location. Um, basically it's a maximum PSI kit and um, it just strengthens the tubing that's inside the ICV system. So on the turbo itself, there's a little fitting that taps the boost line, and this boost line goes all the way up to, not this, this is actually a boost tap for a dyno, but it goes up to this manual boost controller that I have, and from this manual boost controller, it goes all the way around to the side of my tile wastegate right here. Now I just took this off in order to show you guys underneath the manifold itself, but basically, so basically I have this tube that connects to the existing crankcase vent, and I have the bottom capped off because you don't need that. I think this one will, was, will, this originally was hooked up somewhere around the intake, somewhere there. But basically, this goes all the way down and underneath the motor to the actual downpipe side of the car. This crankcase is hooked up to a check valve, which is screwed onto that Venturi tube that I was talking about earlier before inside the downpipe itself. So to conclude on my setup, um, I just want to tell you guys that basically the way that I went through this entire build uh, with these vacuum lines was one, I studied the exact stock setup of all the components inside the entire intake system of the car so that I knew where all the sensors were and I knew where all the lines went. Afterwards, I labeled everything that I could and anything that I wasn't sure of, I looked up part numbers and researched online on what they could possibly be. The next thing is to understand the emission system itself and how it's spliced into the intake system. You need to find out whether or not something can be supplied with a vacuum pressure or both boost and pressure and not be affected at all. Um, you also need to find out which ones you can vent to atmosphere. So the next thing is to actually cap off any ports and vacuum lines that you don't need and basically either tap into the manifold itself with brass fittings in order to get your boost and vacuum line pressures or you can do what I did where I spliced off of uh, an old turkey neck fitting in order to supply uh, air pressure to a boost gauge or you can splice it off of the brake booster line itself. I hope that this video cleared things up for you guys that wanted to build a Turbo E36 and are stuck at the point of where to route the vacuum lines and the boost lines. Um, I'm sorry if this wasn't the best explanation, but I'm trying my best in order to explain how I kind of routed everything. So I'll admit that the components in my car, because it's OBD1, um, were much simpler to deal with. And OBD2 E36s will have a bigger time of figuring out which sensors can be deleted, which sensors can be vented to atmosphere, such like, and, and stuff like that. So thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you guys can benefit from this video. I try my best to explain everything. In the next video, I want to be able to explain you guys the complete lubrication system for the turbocharger in my car. And then hopefully that will clear things up for people that are halfway through their builds and wondering where things go. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.